Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel and welcome to the photography challenge number 19. Every single challenge has been designed to encourage you to pick up your digital camera, get out of the auto mode and take photos of subjects and try out different photography techniques that you may have otherwise not considered. Past challenges have included portrait photography, night photography, abstract, macro, painting with light and many, many more. By taking part in a challenge, you're gonna learn how to get more from your digital camera, but you're also gonna learn how to be more creative with your camera. This is something you cannot achieve in the auto mode. Now, of course, every different challenge has a theme, and this month, I'm challenging you to have a go at silhouette photography. Now, with every different theme, there's a different hashtag. This month's hashtag is photogenius19, and the hashtag simply helps me and others see your images if you do decide to share them to social media. So as well as learning some new camera techniques, I've chosen this month's theme as a way of also encouraging you to think about your composition. Now, composition is incredibly important when it comes to photography. So let's begin by taking a look at some example images. So I've selected some of my favorite silhouette images and you will see that for most of them, the subject is set against the sky, which of course is a bright background. Some of these images were taken at sunrise, some at sunset, just like this surfer image, and this image was shot on a cloudy day. Now when it comes to composition, there is one particular composition rule that everyone should know, and it's the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is where you divide your image into equal thirds, both vertically and horizontally, paying particular attention to the lines and also where the lines intersect. Now with this image of a surfer taken at the Gold Coast at sunset, it may not be obvious to the casual viewer, but this image follows the rule of thirds. Firstly, the subject sits perfectly on the left dividing line. Now if we add the lower horizontal line, we see the lines also intersect exactly where the surfer is. The upper horizontal line sits where the sea meets the coastline and this of course is our horizon. And finally if we add the right dividing line we see a rock also sits where the lines intersect. But if I'm honest this is more about luck as my focus and attention was on the main subject when taking this photo. Now although it's called the rule of thirds, think of it more as a guide. It does not have to apply to every single image. For example, this silhouette image of my daughter, I think works best with the horizon in the center of the frame because I love the symmetry. But of course, because photography like any art form is subjective, I could crop this image in a couple of different ways if I wished. Playing around with the rule of thirds, I now have three different versions and I'd love to know, which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. So one of the easiest ways to capture a silhouette is to try and take a photo where the background is brighter than the light falling upon the subject. We commonly call this backlighting. Now, of course, you can then use software as well to emphasize the silhouette, and we're gonna take a look at that later in the video. But let's begin by taking a look at how to capture a cool silhouette in camera. A very dull and overcast start to the day this morning. Now, whilst I like the clouds and the soft light, a brighter sky would have been better, but sometimes we have to work with whatever we have. Now, this spot is very popular with early morning joggers, dog walkers, and of course, the occasional photographer. My plan is to capture silhouettes of people as they pass me by. Now thinking about my composition, I decided to use this fantastic tree as a way of framing my image and I also set the camera up low to the ground on a tripod. Now today I'm shooting with a Nikon camera in the aperture priority mode, but of course you can use whatever mode you wish as long as it's not auto. So I have the camera's ISO set to my default of 200. I then set my aperture wide at f6.3. Now in aperture priority mode, the camera looks after the shutter speed, setting it for me at 1 100th of a second. I did however adjust the exposure compensation to darken the shadows and make a darker silhouette. This in turn meant the camera adjusting the shutter speed to 1 60th of a second. 
So I took a bunch of images this morning and once back in the office using Lightroom, I was able to review and choose my favorites. And in a moment, I will show you the editing process. Now before that, some tips and let's take another look at the camera settings. So let me share with you a couple of cool tips. Now, firstly, to get a really good solid silhouette, you wanna make sure you're shooting into the light. Make sure that the light is behind the subject. So shooting with your subject set against the sky or maybe a big window would be ideal. Now, next, make sure you focus on the subject because of course you want it to be nice and sharp. Now, when this happens, you may find the camera raises the exposure a little bit. Now, to compensate for this, if necessary, simply adjust the exposure compensation so that you're purposely underexposing your image. Exposure compensation is a great way of adjusting how bright or dark the image is when using the priority modes on a camera. For today's image, I set the camera to aperture priority. This is either A or AV on the camera dial. Once set to this mode, you can easily adjust the aperture simply by turning the dial on the camera. The main advantage of aperture priority is that the camera then adjusts the shutter speed for you. Now to give you more control over the end result, you can then use exposure compensation. On most cameras, look for a plus minus icon, which usually appears next to a button on either the top or the back of the camera. Now, if you hold this button down and turn the camera's main control dial, you can now either increase or decrease the camera's exposure. Now, in a moment, I want to show you how to edit your images. One method is going to be using a free app, which you can do on a smartphone or an iPad. I'm also going to show you quickly how to do this using Lightroom and also Photoshop. Now, before we get into the editing side of things, I really do love to see your images. So if you are sharing your images to social media, a quick reminder that we have a different hashtag for every challenge. This month it's PhotoGenius19 and using the hashtag means that I can find your images. Now, if you're using Instagram, fantastic. If you're a big fan of Facebook, then you may like to know that we have a Facebook group set up specifically for the challenges with over 2000 members now on board sharing their images and getting feedback. I'll put a link up here so you can check it out. It's free to join. I'd love to have you on board. Just don't forget to use the hashtag. So here is my favorite image from this morning and I really love the way the tree and the foreground frames the subject. This image has been edited mostly just to make the subject darker and I'm going to give you some very quick tips on how to do this in Lightroom, Photoshop and also using a free app called Snapseed. So open up the image in Lightroom and the first thing I want to do is use the crop tool just to crop in a little bit tighter. So I grab the crop tool, I resize and move around and what I really want is for the, the tree really to frame the subject. Looks pretty good. Okay, that's good. Hit return on the keyboard and I'm pretty happy now with the composition. I do like the way the tree frames the subject, also this foreground here. Now, because it was a dull day and the background wasn't as bright as it normally is, um, you can see a bit more detail here than I'd like. So what we're going to do actually, we're just going to lower the exposure just a touch. And then I'm going to go to the shadow slider and drop the shadows. And you can see what it's going to do. It's going to affect just the dark shadow areas. So already a big change of hit backslash. You can see the difference. Um, I'm also going to have a little play with the blacks here. I'm just going to drop the uh, drop the blacks down as well. So there you go. So now we've got a really, really cool, solid looking um, silhouette set against those really nice moody clouds. I'm just going to play with the highlights a touch just to bring the highlights up a little bit and uh, maybe the contrast as well. And there you go, just a very quick 60 second edit in Lightroom. Now we're gonna move on to Photoshop. So now I've opened my image in Photoshop. Um, this is of course the, the cropped version. And uh, typically in Photoshop, there are lots of different ways of doing things. I'm gonna show you a very quick way of making the dark parts of this image even darker and creating these really cool solid um, silhouettes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on image. I'm gonna go down to adjustments and levels. Now a little pop-up will display. This is the histogram that represents the uh, the image. Over to the left is our shadows. And if I grab the arrow over to the left and slide it to the right, 
we're going to lose all that detail in the shadow so it's going to make all the dark areas really really black we can also play around with our midtones if we wish and over to the right is our highlights and once we're happy all we got to do is click on OK and there you go we're done that's one of many many ways of doing similar things in Photoshop very quick very simple now we're going to move on to Snapseed, which is a free app for those of you who haven't got Lightroom, haven't got Photoshop, and like to edit using your mobile device or maybe an iPad. So I'm going to begin by opening up the Snapseed app, tap anywhere to open a photo, open from device, and I'm going to choose my image. Because this is a, um, a vertical or landscape image, I'm going to turn the phone on its side, gives us a better view. Over to the right, there's an icon, looks a bit like a pencil. I'm going to click on this to bring up my menu. And top left, tune image. Now with Snapseed, uh, you simply swipe up and down with your finger to choose from the menu options. And then you go left or right to make an adjustment. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose Shadows. And what I'm going to do is reduce the shadows. So I'm going to make the parts of the image that are already dark even darker. So I'm swiping to the left with my finger and you can see it take an effect. I'm going to go to the max. I'm now going to click on the tick in the bottom right hand corner. And uh, that's our starting image and that's our edit so far. So pretty much done already. We've got a really cool solid silhouette. But what I'm going to do just to emphasize the cloud detail is I'm going to tap on the uh, pencil icon once again. Click on details up and down to select structure and then to the right to increase the structure. This will just bring out the detail and the texture in this image, um, which is probably most evident in the clouds. Click on the tick bottom right hand corner. There's our image and that's what we started with. And that's a very, very quick edit for you using Snapseed. So a quick reminder that this month's photography challenge is not just about silhouettes, it's also about composition. So do spend a moment or two thinking about your composition, thinking about where your subject is within the frame to make the picture more interesting and more engaging. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. If you want to find out more about previous challenges, I'll put a link in the description below this video where you'll also find the comment section if you want to say hi, leave a question or give us some feedback on this video or other videos. I love reading your comments. Now I put out new videos every single week as well as the monthly challenges. So if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.